Good evening, and welcome to another one of my segments of A Verse a Day Keeps the Muslims Away. Today I will be talking about the status of women in the Quran. Shall we begin? <clears throat> First, Surah Al-Baqarah, the cow, verse number 223. Your wives are tilth to you, so go into your tilth when you like. So essentially here we're saying that a woman is really nothing but a piece of land and you can go and plow it whenever the hell you want without asking permission or anything so your wife is just there for, for the taking whenever you want. Moving on, verse number 282, same surah. <clears throat> also in Surah Al-Baqarah. And this one's talking about um, if, you're, if you're doing some kind of debt, if you're borrowing money, then you have to get a scribe and let's see what happens. Call in to witness from among your men two witnesses. But if there are not two men, then one man and two women from among those whom you choose to be witnesses. So that if one of the two errs, the second of the two may remind the other. So not only here do we see that two women are worth one man, but also women are so stupid and so dumb and that they're gonna forget. So we need two women so one can remind the other in case she forgets. What if both forget? Moving on, Surah Al-Ma'idah, the food, verse number six. I love this one. When you rise up to prayer, wash your faces and your hands as far as the elbows and wipe your he heads and your feet to the ankles. And if you are sick or on a journey, or one of you come from the privy, or you have touched a woman and you cannot find water, betake yourself to pure earth and wipe your faces and your hands therewith. So, before you pray, you ought to be clean. That's fine. However, if you've touched a woman and there's no way for you to clean yourself from the unholiness of the woman, go find some dirt and rub it all over yourself because dirt is cleaner than a woman. Moving on, <clears throat> Surat, <clears throat> Surat Nur, the light, verse number 31. This is referring to the hijab. Let them wear their head coverings over their bosoms and not display their ornaments except their husbands or their fathers or the fathers of their husbands or their sons or their sons of their husbands or their brothers or their brothers sons or their sisters sons or their women or those whom their right hand possesses slaves or the male servants not having the need of women I'm not sure if those are castrated slaves or gay slaves. It doesn't really say. It's just male servants not having a need of women. Um, or the children who have not attained knowledge of what is hidden of women. So essentially here, you know, you're supposed to cover up except for close family members. And I know it kind of sounds weird talking about covering, covering up your ornament. But I'm going to have to be fair. An ornament here does not really talk about, you know, something that's hanging. It talks about, you know, something that leads grace or beauty. So essentially, it is talking about, you know, covering up your beauty or, and your grace from strangers. Moving on. Surat Al-Ahzab, the Allies, verse number 50. O Prophet, surely we have made lawful to you your wives, whom you have given their dowries, and those whom your right hand possesses out of those whom Allah has given to you as prisoners of war. So, of the women who are lawful to Muhammad, the Prophet, to take, are his wives, who, to whom he has paid dowries, and to whom he is legally married, and all the female slaves that Allah has given him in, as prisoners of war. Moving on, verse number 51. You may put off whom you please of them, and you may take to you whom you please and whom you desire. This is most proper. So Muhammad not only can take any of his wives, 
and any of his female servants, he's also offered any woman that he wants and anyone that he desires as this is most proper. Thanks be to Allah. Moving on. Surat Saft, the Rangers. Ayah uh, Raqam Wahda Shreen, verse number 21 through 23. This is the day of the judgment which you called a lie. Gather together those who were unjust and their associates and what they used to worship besides Allah and lead them to the way to hell. Uh, one thing I do want to bring up here is the Arabic definition of the word associates. I wasn't really clear on what associates mean. Here it says, أَحْشُرُ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا وَأَزْوَاجِهُمْ وَمَا كَانُوا يَعْبَدُونَ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ فَاهْدُوهُمْ إِلَى صِرَاطِ الْجَحِيمِ uh, instead of the word associates, it's translated, actually, the original Arabic is azwajihim, their wives. So, if a man leaves a shitty life, if a man sins, if a man worships somebody other than Allah, lead him to the fiery pits of hell along with his wife, no matter what she's done. Because that's, she's his wife, she's his tilth. Moving on, uh, Surah at talaq the divorce, verse number four. Actually, this book right here talks about the protocols, the social mores, the norms of how you're supposed to divorce a woman. My favorite verse, however, is verse number four, where it says, And as for those of your women who have despaired of menstruation, if you have a doubt, their prescribed time shall be three months. So, if your wife is too young to have even reached puberty if she's not even menstruating yet. Uh, if you're going to divorce her, give her three months. Because, you know, she's just a kid. And the very last one I want to go to is Surat at tahrim the prohibition. Verse number five. This is talking about the Prophet Muhammad. Maybe his Lord if he divorce you, he will give him in your place wives better than you. Submissive, faithful, obedient, penitent, adorers, fasters, widows, and virgins. So, when Muhammad divorces his wife, God will actually give him a better wife who is more submissive and obedient and a widow and a virgin. One thing I do want to go back again to the Arabic section is the word submissive. And surprisingly, it, it was translated properly. In Arabic, the word submissive is Muslimat. Muslimat is the plural form of Muslima. Muslima is the fe feminine form of Muslim. Muslim is a is a, is a Muslim. So Muslim is a, is a male Muslim, Muslima is a female Muslim, and Muslimat are female Muslims. So Muslimat is submissive women, just as a Muslim is submissive, <coughs> you know, to Allah. This is, don't confuse the word Islam with the word Salam they have completely different roots. Actually, they probably come from the same trilateral root, sin, lam, mim, salama. However, one, is, one means peace, one means to submit. This Islam is a religion of submission. Now, to those of you that say, oh, I can find worse verses in the, in, <clears throat> in the Bible, in the Torah, in the Talmud, in the Old Testament, in whatever, I don't care. I don't care. I chose to find the verses in the Quran. If you can find verse, worse verses in any of the other books I've mentioned, good for you. I actually don't give a fuck. I chose to show the religion of peace, the religion of equality, and how it portrays women within it. Thank you very much for joining. And you have a wonderful evening, and see you soon.